This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome back to Living for God's Word, where the plan is to read the Bible in 52 weeks using Dr. Kimberly D. Moore's book, The Bible in 52 Weeks, a year-long Bible study for women. We are in week 25 of the review. If this is your first time coming across this video channel, there are previous weeks video channels, uh, videos as this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome back to Living for God's Word, where the plan is to read the Bible in 52 weeks using Dr. Kimberly D. Moore's book, The Bible in 52 Weeks, a year-long Bible study for women. We are in week 25 of the review. All of the uh, previous videos, including an introduction, are on the channel. And each uh, video in the description um, has a list of resources. Um, as to coming alongside with us of women after God's own heart, slaying giants in the name of Jesus. And this particular giant is reading the Bible in 52 weeks and sticking with it. So before we dive into week 25, that you have the power, it's the title, let us go to God's throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for who you are, almighty, awesome God. You woke us up this morning. You gave us breath. You gave us life. We just thank you, Father, for the eternal life through your son, Jesus. We ask you, Father God, to be with us as we review this uh, word, um, this individual lesson from my sister who is who is coming alongside me, praying for me. I pray for her in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we started um, in Proverbs last week, week Actually, no. Um, we're, Dr. Moore focuses on Proverbs 18 through 21 this week um, in the title, You Have the Power, which is on page 86 of the book. Um, I went back and I, although, um, as you've noticed, if you've, if you've come across this um, for the first time, but previous weeks, Dr. Dr. Moore's method is each week she um, chooses a title and um, she basically focuses on a particular verse or verses. And in this case, we are focusing on Proverbs 18, 18 through 21. In previous weeks, I have not seen that we focused on Proverbs. Uh, we read Proverbs. So I'll, I went back and I saw that in week eight, we started Proverbs. Um, we did Proverbs one through seven. And then um, in week nine, we read Proverbs eight through 14. And then um, in week 10, we um, read Proverbs 15 through 17. So that's week 10. Now jumping ahead in week 25, again, we're in 18 through 21. So with that said, since Dr. Moore is focusing on particularly 18 verse uh, 21, um, I thought it would be a good idea to, like I did with other books, I may not have done all of them, but I'm starting to do it more. Um, so I'll do for um, Proverbs in my women's study Bible, I use the New King James Version, and Dr. Moore uses the New King James Version and the New Living Translation. You'll see that in her book. Um, again, this is an a individual study. Um, so you'll see that uh, at the end of each reading, each week's reading in the book, there's po points to ponder that you uh, individually will answer for yourself. You'll write it down. I thought that it would be great to encourage one another if I will come back each week and uh, share my points of ponder and go over pretty much the, the review. I'm not a seminary trained. I'm a woman just like you after God's own heart in the name of Jesus. Okay, so Proverbs author. This is my um, beginning of the, the chapter. Each Bible in the beginning of the chapter has information, background, author, date, background, themes, and such. So I'm going to read the author who was Solomon, king of Israel. He was the son of David and Bathsheba. And if you remember, he was also 20 when he took the throne and he reigned for 40 years from 971 to 931 BC. About 3,000 proverbs and 1,000 songs are attributed to Solomon. That he authored most of the book of Proverbs is appropriate since he was acclaimed the wisest person in his time. And that's referencing 1 Kings 429-32. Nothing is known about Agur, to whom Proverbs 30 is ascribed, or of Lemuel, whose words are found in Proverbs 31. And as women, we, we know Proverbs 31. Even if we haven't read the whole Proverbs 31, we've heard of it. 
on Solomon's strengths and were not on the battlefield, but in the realm of the mind. Meditation, organization, planning, and regulation, excuse me, negotiation. Except for Moses, Solomon wrote more of the Old Testament than any other man. The writing of the Song of Solomon, probably are the two, um, yeah, is a sign to his youth. Proverbs to his mature years, when he was at the height of his power, and Ecclesiastes to his later years as he reflected on his life and experience. So that's the author. The background of Proverbs is the literary char characteristics of Proverbs. I'm reading this again from my, um, my Bible. The name of this book expresses its writing style. A proverb, um, I think this H-E-B, I think that stands for Hebrew, I'm not sure. <laughs> Marshall, lit, comma, lit, and I think that's literature, short for literature. To be like, or to be compared with is a statement that that makes a comparison usually in the form of a brief saying instead of many words. These are brief but vivid statements taken from everyday life. They are practical guidelines for successful living. Amen. A proverb does not argue. It assumes. Its primary purpose is not to explain a matter, but to give pointed expression to the idea. Many of the proverbial maxims should be recognized as guidelines, not necessarily absolutes. What is stated is generally true, although there may be exceptions. Okay, so um, should I go into themes? Yeah, I'll, I'll themes. Okay, so let me, yeah, I think themes is important. Because for me, a long time, I didn't realize that, um, and I think I said this in one of the videos, that um, wisdom it's referred to as a she, and I think that's this awesome. So the themes here, I want to. I don't know if it talks about the she in here, but the themes according to my Bible says that Proverbs refers often to the path and the way, indicating conduct and lifestyle, and providing both a goal and a means to reach that goal. The goal is successful living, and the route to that goal is the way of wisdom. Along that route, almost every facet of, of important human relationships is mentioned. The book of Proverbs, Proverbs is as relevant now as when it was written. Wisdom concerning relationships is timeless, just as the nature of sin and foolishness never changes. Hallelujah. Running throughout the practical philosophy of these Proverbs is an awareness of the perpetual struggle between good and evil in our lives. Powerful contrasts are used to show why wisdom is the answer. Set in vivid contrast are the ideas of wisdom versus folly, good versus evil, life versus death, which is what we're focusing on this week, 18 verse 8, chapter 18, verse 21. Fidelity versus adultery, truth versus falsehood, prudence versus rashness, prosperity versus pro poverty, industry versus indolence. Truths of eternal importance are set forth. Okay, these are the truths in bullet form. Wisdom, God, in parentheses, godly living, is more valuable than jewels or wealth. Wisdom originates with God. Wisdom is available to all. But each woman and man must choose the path of wisdom. The wise are rewarded for their righteousness. The foolish reap the consequences of their evil de deeds. Amen. So that's um, the background of, of uh, Proverbs. And Oh, I, I love, love Proverbs. Um, my mother apparently loved it too um, because she definitely shared growing up a lot of Proverbs. We didn't know she was speaking to us. <laughs> As we read the Bible for, our, for ourselves, we, a lot of us probably hear our parents talking to us through the Proverbs, which God was speaking to them. As they were, read, were reading it, which I'm sure their four parents were speaking to them. It's just, um, it's lovely. So, um, yeah, and a wise, um, I'll share this, a wise pastor, a couple pastors, um, I think we were visiting a church one New Year's Eve or something like that, and um, and he said, um, 
to start your New Year's off, you know, in a wonderful way, you know, choose to read one verse of Proverbs each day in January because there are 31 Proverbs and there are 31 days in January. So that's um, a, another great way to start your year. And um, or if even if you don't do it in January, maybe choose a month throughout the year that has 31 days and, and read Proverbs. It's, it's great. I mean, it's practical living. And it's funny, you might want to even try the, um, the translation, the message. I get tickled um, from the message because it's, Proverbs is already very practical, but the message, it, you know, translates it in, in, to me, it's humorous only in the sense that it's um, practical is practical. You know, uh, you can relate to it. Like it's, the author says here, it's timeless. You know, it's just as relevant then as when it was written as it is today. So, um, thank God for his word. It's everlasting. It's everlasting. All right. So, now we're going to get to um, to chapter 18. I'm going to flip to 18 in my Bible because I wanted to read. This is a commentary. I don't know if I mentioned that. But this is, um, this women's study Bible is a, is a Bible that has commentary at the bottom. Um not all um, verses have commentary. Certain verses in each Bible is different. Like the, whoever does the commentary is different. So they may choose which comment, which verse to provide commentary for. This Bible, my Bible, um, provides commentary for verse 21, which is the verse that we're studying this week. So I'm going to now get to Dr. Moore's book, which is on page 86. You have the power. Okay, so... I'm going to read her commentary. She's awesome. She says, Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And that's actually the ESV version. I think that's English Standard Version. And then she also says, in the message version, I just referenced that the message version, is, to me, it's comical. Comical to me. I, I just mean comical like it gets me excited. That's what I mean. This is the message version. Words kill. Words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. So you have a choice. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, you're going to either speak blessings or curses. Right? Faith or doubt. Victory or defeat. Abundance or lack. Words have a way of giving direction to where and how far you go. They can determine how easy or difficult the journey will be. What kind of words will you speak? Will they be complaints or encouragements? Will they be negative or positive? And we know in our reading um, about the children of Israel when they wandered in the desert, in the wilderness, how they, you know, complained, murmured and complained, and what did God do when they asked for, um, God provided manna from heaven, and they, they cried and they wanted food, meat, and so he provided quail. Remember what happened? So, it you know, what what is death and life is in the power of the tongue and it, so I won't get into that what we what a heart what is it there's another I'm getting ahead of myself but I just thought about a, um, a scripture that says um, out of the heart the mouth speaks <laughs> so keep your heart clear keep your mind clear and Dr. Moore references a lot of that too, that yes, death and life. I mean, Proverbs eighteen twenty one says, "Death and life are in the power of the tongue." <laughs> All right. So, um, because we live in a world of negativity, it actually takes works to stay positive. Words, excuse me. It takes well, it takes work. It takes work to stay positive. So it's an effort, right? You, you, there's an effort. Um, you'd be surprised as an, as at the negative things we say without even trying. These kids are going to drive me crazy. How many of us say that? seems very innocent to say but it's actually negative i'm never going to get that promotion at this age i'll probably never marry or i'll probably never do i'm inserting probably never buy a house i'll probably never do this never, never do that that's discouragement that's negative that's discouraging now, there's a song uh, encourage yourself um encourage yourself I, it's called encourage yourself so you can go go to youtube and google it i'm the melody is not coming to me at the moment, but yeah, you can encourage yourself. You can encourage others, right? Um, so, um, yeah, so many things we can speak into our own lives because when we, like the, the song does say, when we minister to others, we minister into ourselves. So if we stay positive, we can speak positivity into others, then 
we are actually speaking positivity into ourselves because if we speak, you know, a, a negative to ourselves, more, more than likely we're going to speak negative to others. So, you know, it's a give and take, a two-way thing. Um, okay, she goes on to say, Dr. Moore goes on to say, um, we get used to what we see and hear, and without thinking, we begin to regurgitate what we've consumed. We just have to be intentional with the words that come from our mouths. We've got to shift from harmful words to helpful ones like I can, I will, I am. Hallelujah. However, in order for our vocabulary to change, our mentality has to change. This, Out of the heart, the, it goes to the mind. I think she says this. I'm, not, I'm getting ahead of myself. But anyway, let in Philippians 2, 5, Dr. Moore reminds us that the word says, this is the New King James Version. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What does that say? And there was nothing defeated about Jesus. If we are followers of Jesus Christ, we are supposed to follow his examples. I'm going to read that again. Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Meditate on that for a moment. One more time for the Holy Spirit. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. This is a learning process for all of us. And we've got to learn how to turn the tables on the enemy mm -hmm. and change our vocabulary. Because remember, the enemy only does what, first of all, God allows. And what God allow, what God gives us the power to, or he, yeah, he gives us the choice to follow him. Or allow the enemy to to defeat us. We know that God is the ultimate. God is the only one in control. So if we remember that the enemy is not in control, greater is He that is in you and me than He that is in the world. So He's in the world, but He's nothing. But if we allow the enemy, right? So like Dr. Moore says, um, don't get caught in Satan's trap of constantly speaking words of fear and doubt. Regardless of how impossible your circumstances may seem, keep speaking God's word in faith. Ooh, faith. Ooh. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So that's hope. Right? Uh, that's Hebrews 11, 1, I believe. Uh, based, base what you for he has done so much. Amen. So as of today, start speaking life, not death. Amen. Yeah, let's just speak life into our lives. Because the Lord is good. So the, the points to ponder this week were um, on page 88. There were three of them. The first one is, what are some negative words or phrases that we use daily? I can't. If we just remember that it doesn't matter what we say we can't do, God can do anything. Right? And first of all, it's not even us. So we say, I can't do it, but God can. Um, okay, so number two what are some helpful words or phrases that we need to incorporate into our daily conversations and i was reminded of philippians 4 11 and 12 and also philippians 4 13 and that is uh, 11 and 12 i'm paraphrasing that paul says i have learned to be content in whatever circumstance whatever circumstance is right and then one of my other favorite well one of my favorites i think my aunt and my mother's was 13 and i can do all things through christ who strengthens me Right. And I was I think I recently um, came across a um, commentary on 13 and that a lot of us think that, oh, we can we superpowers, we can do anything through Christ, of course. But he was reminding us that 12, 11 and 12 gives the background of 13. So he's saying that this is the commentary of the pastor or minister. I'm not sure who it was, but if somebody I came across and um, he says that Paul was writing this. And while he was in prison, right? And he was saying, I'm in prison, but God, right? But God, I learned to put it into God's hand that whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm victorious because of God. Like I can do all things because of God through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Number three, in what area of life will you intentionally shift your words in an attempt to shift the course of the situation? In what area of your life? So I said our, our, our adult children. So, um, yeah, I mean, remember, we were their age at one time, so we had to learn our own. So we had to remember, you know, let them make their decisions. Pray, pray, pray for our children. So let us remember that. Pray, 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 pray without season. So on the bottom of page 88, um, the verse of the week was 20 and 21. You know what I didn't do? I did not read the commentary. Um, but I'll read 
again, 18, to 20, 18 and 21. Words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. So words satisfy the mind as much as fruit does the stomach. Good talk is as gratifying as good harvest. Amen. Amen. And before I jump to week 26, um, given the, uh, the the verses that we'll be reading throughout the week, I am going to read the commentary. Um, the strong words, death and life, refer to the impact of speech on others. The Midrash notes that the evil tongue destroys three individuals, the slanderer, the slandered, and the listener. Obviously, the death caused by malicious backbiting, gossiping, or harsh words is not a physical death, but is more deadly than it cannot, because it cannot be seen. Amen. So that's the commentary. So, amen. Thank you. So week 26, which is next week, we're going to be in um, Second Chronicles, back in Second Chronicles. Day one is Second Chronicles 20 to 20, 24. Day two is uh, 25 through 28. Day three is 29 through 32. Day four is 33 to 36. Day five is Psalms. We're back in Psalms, 68 through 72. Day six is 73 through 78. And day seven is a day to catch up on any readings you may have wished, missed. And the day that I said that I will come back and share my points to ponder. Thank you for watching in the name of Jesus.